Hello, everyone. This is Tom from EMA University. And today, we are going to be talking about Fluke Mobile for EMAT X4. The purpose of this video is going to be to give you an overview of what EMAT X4 Fluke Mobile can do for you. And later, I'll have more videos that break into fine details all of the things that we can do in Fluke Mobile for EMAT X4. So let's get started. What can Fluke Mobile 4X4 do for us? Number one, and one of the most important features of Fluke Mobile X4 is the ability to work offline. What happens is if you enter into a dead spot in your building or you go outside and there's no Wi-Fi, Fluke Mobile will sync up those actions within the app itself and then once you hit Wi-Fi, it'll resync those actions to the X4 account. We can view and update work orders in Fluke Mobile, upload photos and documents to those work orders. You can log work hours. We can scan barcodes on assets or parts from within the app. The app does have a built-in barcode reader. We can approve or reject work requests from right inside of the app. Add photos, documents to those work requests. We can utilize push notifications, manage assets and equipment, and also enter condition monitoring readings. This is what it looks like when we're talking about a work order in Fluke Mobile for X4. If you look at the top left where it says by assign date, we have three different categories that we can look at by the actual assigned date, the priority, and the work order number. On the left to that, the sort with the arrow going down, we can do this ascending or descending. On the right-hand side of the screen, where you see the magnifying glass, we can actually search by work order number, description, or work order type. And even if you would like to use the barcode feature, you can click the little green icon there, open up the barcode reader, and scan an asset ID. At the bottom right of the screen, you'll see the blue plus button. That button is where you can create a brand new work order from within the app itself. This is what a work order looks like in Emate. X4 Fluke Mobile. You have the details, which are displayed right now on the screen. Procedures, which you can view without starting the work order. Any type of documentation you may have for this work order, be it a PDF, a picture. We can do part charges here within Fluke Mobile. And you can utilize barcode scanning to do that if you would like. You can put labor charges in manually if you like. But once you start the work order, Fluke Mobile will automatically time and calculate the labor charges based on the time that you've been inside of the work order. And lastly, on the top right, you can change assignments. So if you started this work order, but you're unable to finish it for some reason, you can also assign it to someone else who can then look on their Fluke Mobile and the work order will appear and then they can finish the work order. On your side, when you hit the complete button, the blue button on the screen here, you can choose to complete only your assignment only, then the work order will remain open for your friend to complete. When we're talking about assets, you can use the barcoding feature inside of eMate. By default, if you click on the green icon and you scan it, barcode that was generated in eMate, like the one shown on the screen, it will take you to a screen where you select the asset. Right below the search blue button, the asset will appear. If you click into that asset, then this is what you will see. These are the asset properties. From here, we can do a couple of things. We can look at documents from the asset, any part that's ever been used for the asset, and also condition monitoring points. 
If those are set up in X4, they will carry over to Fluke Mobile, and you can enter into the asset condition monitoring readings. Also, as you can see at the very middle bottom of the screen, we can view the work order history for this asset to see all of the work orders that have been made and created for this asset, including it will show you the progress as well, whether it's in progress, completed, or paused. From within Fluke Mobile X4, we can also work with work requests. As you can see at the top left of the screen, we can sort these by work request number, by the work request status, or by the work request date. We can also have these sorted ascending or descending based on the direction of the arrow. You can click the blue plus button at the bottom right to create a brand new work request. This is what a work request looks like when you open one up. You have the details and you also have documents. Documents is where we could add photos or literally PDF documents to a request if that was something that you needed to do. You can approve or reject a request from here. If you reject the request, it will bring up a pop-up window where, where you will have to give a description or a reason for rejecting the request. This is very powerful because if you are in charge of approving and rejecting these requests, you can walk the floor or your plant and approve and reject them as you look at the requests themselves. You can look at the actual machine and see if it's a legitimate request and approve and reject right there on the mobile app. The last thing we're going to talk about today is at the very top of your Fluke mobile app, you see a little eye with a circle, four lines that look like a Wi-Fi strength, and a checkbox or a check mark. The eye for information will bring up the left screen that is below it there, which will give you the client version, your site, and also your server address. This is important in case you need to contact so support for feedback to let them know the login ID person, the site, and also your site address or your server address. You also have the option to send feedback from within the app. If you click send feedback, it'll open up the form that you see in the middle. And you could include a log if you have one and your email address. If you are in contact with support, there may be a time where they ask you to clear all local data. If that's the case, just simply click the button there and clear the data. The green check mark on the right hand side you will notice when you're doing work in Fluke Mobile that that green check mark may be replaced by a circle with a number in it. Well, that circle and number refers to the number of events that are being queued up to be synced with the server when you're back connected to the internet. If you're offline, that number could go up in the hundreds until you connect back to your Wi-Fi and get connected back to the internet. And then it will sync up those events with your X4 account. On the far right hand side you see the events if i were to click the checkbox this is what it would look like it would show the events that are being that are waiting to be queued up if you do have an exclamation point here the best advice that i can give is to at that specific event when you're on wi-fi simply click retry and most of the time that event will successfully go through and then all of the events after it will queue up as well so the purpose of this video today was to give you an overview of X4 Fluke Mobile. I will prepare more videos in more detail for each of the different sections in Fluke Mobile, work orders, assets, and work requests, perhaps even this part here. So let's review what we've seen today. The key takeaways for Fluke Mobile and X4 are the offline mode, built-in barcode reader, the ability to use condition monitoring, approving, creating, and rejecting work requests, and also adding photos and documents to those work orders and work requests. In order to do the last bullet, there's a small X4 configuration that is required, but it's not that difficult to do. So that concludes today's video of X4 
Fluke Mobile Overview. Please stay tuned for more videos for the other topics in X4 Fluke Mobile. Thank you for your time, and I will see you on the next one.